Welcome friends, in this section we will study about permissive overreach transfer trip schemes. Permissive overreach transfer trip mode uses a permissive release principle. The overreaching zone Z1 B set beyond the opposite station is decisive. This mode can also be used on extremely short lines where a setting of 85% of line length for zone 1 is not possible and accordingly selective non-delay tripping could not be achieved. In this case, zone 1 must be delayed by T1 to avoid non-selective tripping by zone 1. Figure shows the operating scheme. If the distance protection recognizes a fault inside overreaching zone Z1B, it initiates a release signal to the opposite line end. If a release signal from opposite line end is received, a trip signal is initiated via the tripping relay. A prerequisite for fast tripping is therefore that the fault is recognized inside Z1B in the forward direction at both lines. The distance protection is set such that overreaching zone Z1B overreach beyond the opposite station approximately 120% of the line length. On three terminal lines, Z1B must be set to reliable reach beyond the longer line section even with the intermediate in feet via the T point. The first zone is set in accordance with the normal time grading that is approximately 85% of the line length on the tr three terminal lines at least beyond the T point. So here you can see this is a station A and this is station B. Uh, this is uh, zone 1 for station A and this is zone 1 B for station A which is extens uh, zone 1 extension and this is uh, station uh, uh, zone 1 for station B that's called zone 1 B and this is uh, extension zone zone 1 B B. So let's see how this functions uh, you can see if the relay is picked up in Z1B, okay, then relay will, you can see it will immediately is giving, uh, first of all, the transfer signal. This is Z1B. When it's picked up, it will give permissive signal to station A. And further, what it is doing, it is coming in AND operation here and it also need a permissive signal at the remote end and when the permissive signal is available for example this relay has also seen the fault in power direction then in that case these both are one and this is an OR case and in that case the relay will give tripping or if the relay is picked up in zone 1 it will give immediate tripping or if the relay is picked up in Z1B and is also receive a remote signal, it will trip. So these are the example at station A. In the same way, you will see the examples at station A also. This is example of station B. This is example of station A. So this is how permissive overreach transfer trip scheme is working. I think this is uh, very simple. In the permissive overreach, uh, the relay is sending trip command. When the relay is picked, uh, relay sending, just, uh, 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 sending the uh, permissive command to the remote end when it's picked up in Z1B. Whereas in PUTT, we have seen that relay is sending the permissive command when the relay is picked up in Z1. So this is the difference between these two and this normally it is used, this scheme is used in the short lines because if for example if the short line impedance is here is 0.5 ohm, its line is very small so it's very difficult to set 80% of the line would be for example 0.4 something. So it's very difficult, the impedance is very small. In that case, the one option could easily be that we can use permissive overage transfer trip schemes 
and using these schemes you can do the faster trapping so let's discuss about overreach in more detail in this scheme a distance tree element set to reach beyond the remote end of the protected line is used to send an intertrapping signal to the remote end however it is essential that the received relay contact is monitored by directional relay contact to ensure that tripping does not take place unless the fault is within the protection protected zone figure 12.8 the instantaneous contact of zone to unit are arranged to send the signal and the received signal supervised by zone 2 operation is used to energize the trip circuit. The scheme is then known as permissive overage transfer tripping scheme, sometimes abbreviated as POTT, POR or POP dash and comparison scheme or permissive overage distance production scheme. To prevent operation under current reversal condition in a parallel feeder circuit, it is necessary to use a current reversal guard timer to inhibit the tripping of zone of the forward zone to element. Otherwise, small operation of the scheme may occur under current reversal conditions section 12.3.2 for more details. It is necessary only when zone 2 reach is set greater than 50% of the protected line impedance. The timer is used to block the permissive trip signal send circuits as shown in figure 12.9. The timer is energized if signal is received and there is no operation of zone 2 element. An adjustable time delay on pickup is usually set to allow instantaneous tripping to take place for any internal faults taking into account a possible slower operation of zone 2 the timer will have operated and blocked the permissive trip and signal send circuits by time the current reversal take place the timer is de-energized if the zone 2 element operate or the signal receive element reset the reset time delay of the timer is set to cover any overlap in time caused by zone 2. Elements operating and signal resetting at the remote and when the current in the healthy feeder reverses using a timer in this manner means that no extra time delay is added in the permissive trip circuit for an internal fault. The above scheme using zone 2 relay element is often referred to as POP zone 2 scheme an alternative exists that is who uses zone 1 element instead of zone 2 and is this referred to as POP Z1 scheme? However, POP Z1 is unusual as it requires zone 1 to be set overreaching, which is not usual practice. So, this is current reversal guard logic with permissive overreach. So, you can see if the relay is picked up in zone 1, it will trip immediately the local breaker. And if the relay is picked up in zone 2, zone 2 timer will run and it will trip the local breaker. If the relay is picked up zone 3, after zone 3 timer, relay will trip the local breaker. And here we will see uh, if, for example, the relay is picked up in zone 2 and it will send the signal. Signal will be sent uh, here, you can see. And if the signal signal send will be happening here and here you can see signal receive if signal is received and relay is for example is not picked up in zone 2 this is basically the current reversal logic they want to explain here if the relay signal is received and relay is not picked up zone 2 then this end logic will be 1 and this timer will start and you can see another logic that is enabling here if signal is received and relay is not picked up in zone 2 the timer will start and this timer TP to TD let's again see in detail the timer is de-energized if zone 2 element operates or signal receive element reset. So, 
so if zone 2 operate this will be 1 this will be 0 so timer will be reset and again if signal receive is reset the timer will be again reset the reset time delay td of the timer is set to cover any overlap in time caused by a zone 2 element operating and signal resetting at the remote end when the current in the healthy feeder reverses using a timer in this manner means that no extra time delay is added in the permissive circuit for internal fault the above scheme using zone 2 relay element is often referred to as pop zone 2 So here you can see this uh, basically the timer so this is taking this is the current reversal logic so this timer will be running and after the given time delay this timer when this is on this will not allow the signal to be sent to the remote end so these are some examples of permissive overreach transfer trip schemes that we have study and this is the logic diagram that we have understood so I hope you enjoy this uh, training so far and we will move to the, our new topic that is weak in feet and no in feet production thank you very much